Welcome to the Real Health Podcast, where we help you achieve the best and strongest version of yourself. Be sure to follow us online on Instagram, Twitter, like us on Facebook, and subscribe on YouTube. You are listening to the Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. Episode 1, The Total Food Makeover. All right, welcome to the Real Health Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Taylor Crick from Salt Lake City, Utah, owner and operator of Align Utah, an Align Family Chiropractic, a maximized living clinic. And so each and every episode, we're bringing to you the most cutting edge information on health and wellness out there today and looking at it through the five essentials of maximized living. So if this is your first time joining us, the five essentials of maximized living, that's the system uh, that we deliver in our office that gets excellent wellness results, you know, not just people getting out of pain, but getting off medications, losing weight, overcoming disease, and just, you know, amazing results through these five essentials. And so those are, as always, maximize essential number one, maximize your mindset. So that is the first thing is change the way that you think about your health. That's also, you know, minimizing stress, maximizing relations. But your mindset has to be number one. You have to change the way that you think about health before you're going to do anything that we talk about today or that you hear on the show here or, you know, anything that you read. You have to think about health differently before any of that is going to have any effect or see any effect in your life. And essential number two, that's maximize the nerve supply. That's the most important one. This is the one that is the most often overlooked. After you change the way that you think about your health, you're going to start to do things that lead you towards a healthier life. And one of those things has to be taking care of your spine and your nervous system. So your body has a nerve supply that runs and controls every single function. And in order for your body to be functioning at its highest potential, that nerve supply has to be maximized. And the way that we do that is through chiropractic adjustments, through spinal rehab and spinal hygiene, taking good care of your spine just the same way that you do with your teeth. Uh, And also through corrective care, you know, actually correcting, physically, structurally correcting the spine, seen through pre and post x-rays, correcting the spine is how you can maximize your nerve supply. Essential number three, maximizing your quality nutrients. And that's the one we're going to talk about today. So we're going to get into that more in a minute. That's your nutrition. We're going to talk about some of the basics of the maximized living nutrition plans. Essential number four, that's maximizing your oxygen and your lean muscle mass. So your exercise and exercising, you know, not just moving or walking, but actually exercising the right way. And essential number five, minimizing your toxins. Okay. And so toxins are one thing that we're getting exposed to uh, each and every day in an unbelievable rate. Uh, and, you know, they lead to things like hormone disruption, cancer, weight gain, uh, you know, and even just daily things like headaches, brain fog. Uh, so, you know, we need to make sure that we're minimizing our exposure to toxins and knowing where they're coming from. But through looking at each and every one of those five essentials, uh, you know, looking at all of them together, really, we see, you know, the results of each one compound on each other and, and you know, Uh, just grow exponentially when you add all five of those together. And so today we're looking at essential number three and really talking about, uh, you know, a total food makeover and giving yourself, giving your family a total food makeover and really looking at the why. You know, and in the next few episodes here, we're going to look into some of the details, but we have to start with the why. Why do we need a total food makeover? And, you know, the first thing that you have to look at, you know, when we're looking at anything with our health is looking at the SAD reality. And, you know, the SAD reality is SAD is an, actually an acronym for Standard American Diet. And it is exactly what it says it is. It's sad, okay? And so, you know, over about two-thirds of American adults are overweight, okay? Uh, which is, the, you know, the overwhelming majority. So it's no longer the norm to be normal weight. You know, all normal means is that it's uh, most people fall into that category. So now the, real, the new norm is to be overweight. Over half of those, over 33, over 35%, actually getting closer to 40%, of Americans are 
obese. So over one out of three American adults are considered obese. And what that leads to, you know, this is not an aesthetics thing um, or, you know, a food consumption thing. This is a, a health thing, you know. And what it leads to is here in the U.S., we have a heart disease death occur about every 34 seconds, so about two a minute. Uh, so since we've been talking here, you know, six people have died from heart disease, which is crazy to think about. Those are purely American statistics. You know, cancer in the U.S., over 1,500 people die a day, over 3,400, 3,500 are diagnosed each and every day. Um, and so that's what it's leading to is the st standard American diet is leading to really, you know, our overall health being destroyed. Let's talk about diabetes, the next one. You know, that one's directly caused from the standard American diet. Right now, it's about one in three are diabetic and pre-diabetic. Uh, and about a quarter of those, you know, don't know that they have it. So that's crazy. You know, about a quarter of people have not been diagnosed yet as diabetic or pre-diabetic, but they will be. And if you think about it, you know, if, if you think back 10, 10 years ago, even 20 years ago, uh, type 2 diabetes, what did we call it? We called it juvenile, or we, excuse me, rather, we called it adult onset diabetes. That was type 2 adult onset diabetes uh, because that was the one that would onset later in life as an adult. Now they call it type 2 diabetes because it starts in our kids. It's the fastest growing disease in our children. That's the fastest growing segment of the population getting diabetes. And it's the fastest growing disease on the, on the planet. You know, it's not just an American problem, but as other countries adopt more of a Western American SAD standard American diet, uh, diabetes continues to rise in those countries as well. So we have to look at we have to look at our food and you know there's a lot of books out there right now like it starts with food okay and i love that title or eat to live you know these are great titles and great programs but they're true too it has to start with food now in our five essentials it's essential number three because there are two things that are more important because you know how many of you have have known somebody who you'd say ate a very very healthy diet but still developed cancer or, you know, still developed heart disease or still, you know, died of a heart attack at age 60. You know, we can think of examples like that. So it starts with food, but it's not the most important thing. But it has to start with what we are putting into our bodies because it's a choice, right? It's a every day what you put in and what you don't put in is a choice, Okay, and so what we're going to talk about in the next several uh, episodes here on the podcast is we're going to talk about really the details of what it looks like to do a total food makeover. Okay, and so we're starting with today the why of why you're doing the total food makeover. Okay, and so a lot of us, you know, we, we hear tidbits of information, you know, we'll hear bits and pieces here, we'll try you know, a new food here, or try something new there, but we never really fully do a total food makeover. And that's really what I'm calling for and what, you know, what we need. Uh, most Americans, most families, most adults, you need to just wipe the slate clean and change everything about the way that you think about food, the way that you prepare food, the way that you shop for food, uh, and the way that you eat your food, you need to just change it. And that has to start with why. And like we just talked about, you know, the healthcare stats, we could go on and on with the healthcare stats. And most people are aware of, you know, what's going on in our world, uh, healthcare wise, especially in our country, especially, you know, if you listen to the podcast regularly, you're, you're more than aware. Um, but it has to start with why are you doing it too? Why do you need a total food makeover? Why do you want to eat healthy? Why do you want to live a long life? What's your big why? And that has to be the start, your big why you know, why, why are you living? Why do you wake up in the day? Why do you work? Who are you earning for? Uh, you know, and so my big why, you know, I always talk about my big why being, you know, my, my grandparents, you know, and, uh, and just seeing an awesome example of health being set for me, you know, by my grandparents, uh, and by my parents also. But now my bigger big why are my two twin girls. You know, my twin baby girls are my big why. Why I want to be healthy. Because even before they were born, I knew that I wanted to have kids and I wanted to be around for them. And I want to be around just the same way that my grandparents have been for me. And I want to be around for their kids. I even want to be around for their for their grandkids, uh, if at all possible. Uh, so I just do everything that I can uh, to make that a reality. And so you have to think about what is your big why. Who are you living for? Who are you doing for? Or maybe even 
who have you seen in the past not live this way? You know, a lot of my patients, their big why is that they saw their parents slowly degenerate and, and you develop disease in the last 10, 20 years of their life and then die 10, 20 years too early. You know, and that story is all too common today. You know, we fall 51st in the world in life expectancy. It's far too common that people that we know and love, that we would have loved for them to be around another 5 to 10, 20 years, uh, died too early uh, because of the lifestyle choices that they made. So whatever your big why is, you have to anchor to it. But then when you start to get into a total food makeover, we're really going to talk about four different topics. And I'm going to touch on each of those right now. Uh, but then we're going to record, you know, uh, an episode on each of those coming up too. So you can get into the archives, you can listen to each of these. You know, this is something that, it, you know, you can never hear too many times, you can play it on repeat, uh, you can get it in your car while you're driving, and you're always going to need to, to hear this over and over again, uh, what these four core principles are of the maximized living nutrition plans, and of the total food makeover. Uh, and so number one, is sugars, decreasing or eliminating your sugars, okay? And so actually, I'm just going to say all four, and then we'll go through each of them. So one is sugar, uh, decreasing your sugar. Two is fats, you know, changing your fats, actually increasing your good fats, and decreasing your bad fats. Uh, we're going to talk about, you know, the big myth that fat makes you fat. Uh, we're going to debunk that myth. So number three is your protein, you know, eating clean, lean protein from good quality sources. Um, but, you know, you get a lot of questions with protein about animal products. Should, we, should I eat animal products? Should I not? Should I be gluten-free? Gluten is a protein. Should I be casein-free? Casein is a protein. Um, you know, so we get a lot of questions on protein. We're going to cover each of those. And number four is toxins, toxins in your food supply. If you can do those four things, look at each of those four areas, uh, you're going to give yourself the best chances of success with a, when it comes to a total food makeover. It will change the way, if you're not already thinking about these things or you're not already doing them correctly, it will change the way that you shop. It will change the way that you buy food. It will change the way that you prepare food. And it will change and transform your health and your life. So number one, sugar. Sugar is the first one because in our diet, in the SAD, in the SAD, in the standard American diet, Sugar is what's killing us. Sugar is literally killing us. Uh, I just watched a video and it was called Sugar is Killing Us. Uh, that's not a, you know, a pun. That's not a metaphor. Sugar is killing us. So you know, when you look at how and you look at why, what I want you to think about first is something that you know, I'd say yeah, 30, 40 years ago, Something that they really started to discover was killing us. You know, they knew it before then, but they really, really, really started to be stringent about it. Cigarettes, okay? And so sugar is today's version of cigarettes. They know that it's killing us. It's now, we're now aware of that, but we're still doing it. And that's really what happened with cigarettes. You know, for a while, they, there was research that showed that it was killing us. But, you know, it wasn't until, you know, I remember my first year at chiropractic school, you could still smoke in the bars uh, in Iowa. So it, it hasn't, it took a long time for these changes to come around. And that's really what's happening with sugar. But they're realizing and when you treat it, and when you think about it in the exact same way as cigarettes, you start to look at sugar a lot differently. You start to look at it as just as addictive. You know, so if you've ever known anybody that had to give up cigarettes or quit cold turkey, that's not an easy thing to do. That's the exact same thing with sugar. That is not an easy thing to do. So if you're out there and you're struggling or you're battling with that, uh, you know, we understand that that's not an easy thing to do. But here, here's really the top 10 reasons to avoid sugar. And we'll go through these really quickly. Uh, and we're going to get into this at a later episode. But number one is sugar is the primary dietary cause of obesity. Uh, you know, we're the, we have the most sugar consumption in our country, and we also have the most obese people. We just actually got surpassed by Mexico. They actually probably eat more sugar than us, and so they just surpassed us as the most obese country, um, high, high sugar content. Sugar increases the acidity of the body. So definitely tune into that sugar episode of the podcast. 
to hear about what acidity does to your body and what you can do about it. Sugar causes inflammation. So inflammation is at the root of most chronic diseases today. Cellular inflammation, you can have arterial inflammation, that's like heart disease. Uh, sugar is the primary reason for high cholesterol. So sugar causes you know, that unhappy triad that we see in so many people, uh, which is high LDL, bad cholesterol, low HDL, good cholesterol, and high triglycerides. That's caused by sugar. Sugar causes, causes hormonal and metabolic imbalances, number five. So sugar disrupts your hormones and disrupts your metabolism. And that leads to all kinds of issues down the road, uh, including most of the chronic diseases that we're seeing such a dramatic rise in today, you know, have a hormone component to them or have a metabolic component to them. Sugar is your fast track to diabetes. Sugar is literally the cause of diabetes. Like we said, you know, the fastest growing disease in the world, but also, you know, it takes an average of eight years off a person's life. Sugar's the cause of, of that. Sugar's a known toxin. Number seven, sugar leads to heart disease. Number eight, sugar is an anti-nutrient. Number nine, and sugar promotes cancer. Number 10. And so, you know, those are the top 10 reasons to avoid sugar, but there's a hundred reasons and we're going to go into what each of those 10 reasons mean, the mechanisms, how it works. But, you know, with a total food makeover, that's the first principle, decrease your sugars. The second principle is increase your good fats, okay? So there's a big myth out there that fat makes you fat. But many people, you know, know today that that's just not true because if it were, we have more low-fat foods on our shelves than any other country on the face of the earth. But we have more overweight and obese people. So fat does not make you fat. It's the inability to burn fat that makes you fat. So by cutting out your sugars, like we talked about the first principle, and by increasing your good fats, you actually encourage your body, teach your body, and trick your body into being a fat burner rather than a sugar burner. So you can actually turn your body from a fat or from a sugar burner into a fat burner by giving it the right fuel. So that's the second principle is increase your good fats. So, you know, where do those come from? It's olives, olive oil, butter. You know, you may have seen the Time magazine cover this summer. Eat butter is what the the headline said. Uh, Coconut products, coconut oil, uh, your your wild caught uh, or sockeye, Alaskan salmon. Salmon's a good one. Cold water fish. But you want to up your your uh, your dosage or your intake of good fats. And on the same lines, you want to decrease your bad fats. Those are your hydrogenated oils, your vegetable oils, your canola oils. You want to decrease all those bad oils because just in, just in the same way that your good fats are going to help you, your bad fats are going to hurt you. So that's the second principle is change your fats uh, and increase your good fats, help your body become a fat burner. So the third principle is protein. You know, eat lean, clean protein. And one of the biggest things with protein is that, you know, a lot of protein, what we're talking about is animal products. So we get a lot of questions, you know, should I eat animal products or not? And we're definitely not against animal products, definitely actually for them if they are from the right sources, if they are a good source. And the reason for this is because these animal products are at the top of the food chain. So you're not only eating, you know, the food that you're eating, but you're also eating what they ate, what that cow ate, what that fish ate, what that chicken ate. You're eating what they ate and what it ate. So you have to look all the way down the food chain to see what you're getting in the way of toxic bioaccumulation. So that's why you want to start with clean proteins. What that looks like is so chicken, eggs, great sources of protein. Uh, You know, another one, you know, some dairy products. I don't do a lot of dairy because most of it's been pasteurized and homogenized. But if you can get raw dairy, great source of protein. But you want that to be organic and grass fed. That's really, really important. You know, we always talk about good, better, and best. And, or, you know, non-organic is not even an option for me when it comes to animal products. Should not be for you either. Organic is good. Uh, Best is grass fed. 
uh, has to be grass fed. That changes the, the fat ratios so that you're getting good fats, you're getting benefits, you're not getting anything harmful. So grass fed when it comes to your, oh, excuse me, that, and that's your, uh, that's your beef, your beef and your dairy, your chicken, your eggs. Your chicken and your eggs, you want to be free range if possible. Free range is the best. Uh, one thing you can look for when you look at your eggs is when you crack the yolk, is it a nice orange color rather than yellow? That's a good sign that the chicken was foraging, eating you know the, the foods that are natural to its habitat rather than a bright yellow. Uh, so free range, organic is a must. You also want to make sure that there's no hormones, no antibiotics ever used in any of your animal products. So when it comes to protein, that's a big thing. Change your animal products first before you change anything else in your diet. Total food makeover changes. Uh, cut out sugar and change your animal products. And then, and then the good fats, really. Uh, changing the animal products has to be the first thing because it's at the top of the food chain. The fourth principle, and you know we'll get into that in a lot more detail in the uh, protein podcast, so make sure you tune into that one. The fourth one is toxins, and so toxins are hiding in our food supply, and really it's not even to the point where they're hiding anymore. They're blatantly in there. Um, you know, different things like food colorings, like artificial sweeteners, like preservatives, like MSG, a known neurotoxin, aspartame, a sweetener, a known neurotoxin. Uh, these toxins that are in our food supply can really sabotage even if you're doing the other three principles and you're doing them really well or you're eating you know, a lot of, lots of fruits, lots of vegetables, clean proteins, but you're also eating a lot of toxins, they can sabotage anything else that you're doing. So you want to know where the toxins are are coming from, you want to know how you can avoid and eliminate them. Some of the ones that we've already talked about, sugar, you know, the sugar, not only does sugar, you know, there's a difference between, you know, raw cane sugar and high fructose corn syrup. Um, and so high fructose corn syrup is going to have more toxicity, even though they're both really bad for your insulin response and your, you know, your, uh, yeah, your insulin response and your body's ability to burn fat. Um, they're also going to be a difference in toxicity there. So you want to know the difference. You want to know what you're getting uh, from where with these toxins. A couple of the other ones we've talked about, hydrogenated oils, partially hydrogenated oils, the trans fats. Uh, and then even you know the toxins that are in the meats, uh, the hormones, the antibiotics. Uh, there's a reason why you don't want those in in your food is because you're getting them in your body. And, you know, you don't want to be taking hormones. You don't want to be taking antibiotics because those are going to throw off your body's natural ability to be healthy. You know, those are only there for emergency purposes when your body, you know, when you actually need them. Um, but you don't want to be taking them in from your food supply. So you got to watch out for the toxins. So one, two, three, four, sugar, fats, proteins, toxins. We're going to get into those four over the next four episodes, get into them in detail so that you know what to watch out for, uh, so that you can do a total food makeover in your life and in your family and start to see your weight transform, your energy transform, and your overall health and life start to change and transform. So once again, this is Real Health. I'm your host, Dr. Taylor Crick. Tune in next time as we talk about sugar. Thank you for listening to The Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com.